do you believe in Bigfoot? Or is that like asking, do you believe in Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny? <laughs> well, I actually believe in Santa Claus. I Because I am Santa Claus. Today I want to talk to you about some supposed Bigfoot video that was shot here in Utah up on Mount Ogden. That's right above the city of Ogden here in Utah. I have a lot of years of experience in the mountains. I have a lot of years experience camping and hiking, photographing. I don't remember the first time I went camping. I mean literally have been in the outdoors and been taught how to live in the outdoors as long as I can remember. I've also been a professional photographer for 30 plus years and a large portion of that has been photographing wildlife, landscape, nature stuff. I spend a lot of time outdoors. Some guy from here in uh, Roy, Utah posted a video claiming to have photographed Bigfoot traversing across a mountain. The funny thing about this is my son showed it to me. It was it was shared on Rocky Mountain uh, Bigfoot organization or something like that on YouTube. I looked at it and I was like, well, that's interesting, but it looks like a skier to me or somebody on a snowmobile. I didn't really look at it in depth after that except for just zooming in on my phone going to the to the uh, guy's youtube channel that actually shared it and zooming in on my phone and taking a better look at it and i could tell it was a person most likely on a s snowmobile or skiing it, hard to tell my first guess was a snowmobile because it appears that they're moving uh, uphill at a at a just a nice steady glide I commented on, on the guy's YouTube channel and on a couple other people's that have put it out there claiming this is a Bigfoot. Now, you got to understand something. If you're not from Utah, we've had, I believe, the eighth or ninth busy, uh, wettest year on record. We have been getting slammed with snowstorms. Up on that mountain, there's easily 10 to 15 feet of snow. And right on the backside of the mountain is a ski resort. <laughs> So it it's not a stretch. I know people do it. They take the, the 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 lift up to the top, the highest lift up there, and then they hike from there back up onto the ridge and backcountry ski the whole front side of that mountain. It's not uncommon for guys to do this. Uh, it's just all the time. So if you're not familiar with Utah and the outdoors and backcountry skiing, I can see how you might think, well, that's really weird. It's a skier. It's a, it's a skier skiing. The guy actually got another video with two people crossing in that area, and it gave me a little bit better perspective. There's radio towers on the top of Mount Ogden, and in his video, they're tilting at an angle. I straightened it up, and it really plainly shows that these guys are skiing. They're traversing across the face of that mountain above. They'd skied down the bowl probably a little bit, and now they're skiing back across to get back over to the ridge where they can ski back inbounds at the resort. So I have a plan, which is I, I was out yesterday trying to photograph it. I'm going to shoot my own video. Now, the guy that shot this video is five miles, five, six miles away in the city of Roy. And he's also shooting right over the top of either a retail store or some kind of um, warehouse that's just the heat waves coming off of it and uh, it disrupting the atmosphere are insane. The whole video quality is crap. And I told him that. I'm like, look, if you're going to put something out there claiming you got video of Bigfoot, at least make it at least have decent video, not something that's so far away you can't tell what it is and that is crap. He shot this through a spotting scope with his phone held up to the spotting scope. I called him out on it. Yeah, I'm kind of a jerk sometimes. But I called him out and I'm like, look, guy, I mean, come on, really? If you're going to put something like this out, at least have decent video. I mean, you can't tell what it is in the video without really looking at it closely, which is what I decided to do. <laughs> So 
I've been going up there. Uh, I'm about half an hour south of, of Ogden where I live. I was up there yesterday looking for spots to film that spot with, with my equipment, which is much better. So I've been going up there and trying to get footage. As I said, you got to understand something about what's going on here in Utah. We're getting slammed with storms. I've had, I've put it out there on YouTube. Hey, I'm going to go film this and prove to you guys that this is just people on skis. Well, one guy last night, well, I'm waiting for your film. Where is it? I'm trying. You can't see the friggin' mountain. <laughs> it's been, the mountains have been socked in. We've been getting just buried in snow and there's more storms on the way. Yesterday was a clear day. I sat in a parking lot and filmed across there. Nobody was up there. The avalanche danger is way too high to be out. I know this. I've been a backcountry camper and skier and stuff. You just, you don't go out in times like this. You wait till it settles down and the avalanche danger goes down. It's way too high right now. Nobody should be out there. If they are, they're stupid. So I'm going to keep trying to get footage of, good, better footage than what he got by a long shot, showing its skiers up there. But let's get to the, get to the chase here, Tom. Come on, quit, quit rambling. I'm going to analyze his video here for you and show you what I found looking at it just with my video editing program, which is just DaVinci Resolve, not a big high-end program. I'm going to analyze it, show you what I got and what I came up with, and it's obviously guys on skis, and I'll show you. So let me show you this. All right, so I'm going to go through some of this that I've zoomed in on. I wish I had the original footage, the dude that filmed this, you know, if you were want to give me the original or a copy of the high res footage would make this so much easier. But I have a suspicion you already know this is a skier that you figured it out and you're just not willing to, to just tell people, oh, sorry, I was mistaken. This is a skier. Anyway, let me show you this. So here, there's the figure right there. This is zoomed in five times and this clip and it's it's so hard to see. You can see the angle here. That's the edge of the frame. That's how much I had to tilt this to straighten it out so that you could see that he's skiing downhill slightly. So watch this. See, he's going across at a slight downhill angle. And there's pull pushing going on there. You watch his upper body, you can see some pull pushing. This is eight times, and you can really see the pull pushing. His his upper body is moving. It's doing something. It, he's pushing himself with his poles. And then this is at ten times, and it's really hard to see because it's just shaky, shaky crap. Now, this is the sidestepping. He stopped, and you can see the skis in front of him right here you can see him slightly the shadowing is is what's caught making it hard to see plus the skis are sinking in the snow blurry 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 because we have an earthquake you know but <laughs> it'll stop here now watch how much watch how much he moves compared to this line right here of that shadow of the tree up he's sidestepping and you can really see the skis off the front of him in a couple a couple times and he's sidestepping up and moving forward to gain some elevation so he can continue skiing across the front of this mountain. I mean, look at that. It's 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 so obvious. It's so obvious to me it's a skier. It's it's ridiculous that anybody would think this is a Bigfoot. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, but come on. There's a ski resort on the backside of the mountain. People backcountry ski right in that spot all the time. There's a great bowl right below those radio towers that people like to ski in. But then they got to get back over to the saddle so that they can get back in the resort bounds and ski back down. So that's what he's doing. You know, if you think this is a Bigfoot or possibly could be a Bigfoot, I'm sorry to burst your bubble. I really am. But... There's no reason a Bigfoot would be up in that area this time of year. Ten feet of snow. No. And they're not Legolos, if you know what that is a reference of. Somebody else made that comment on this guy's video. They're not Legolos. They can't just walk across the snow like magic, you know, like an elf lord from the Lord of the Rings can. <laughs> They'd be plowing through the snow just like we would. Post hole in it, trying to make it through. That's a guy on skis. I can guarantee it. And I'm going to get better footage. Watch for another video where I'm going to, I'm going, I got a mission to film that. 
And it's just going to be a matter of time for the avalanche danger to, to, to mellow out, for the clouds to clear out, so I can get some footage of guys up there skiing and showing with better equipment what this is. If you believe that Bigfoot exists, like, actually I do, <laughs> and great. You know, I mean, people might, people think I'm weird, that I'm crazy when I mention this, but I've had some experiences. They could be explained by people, but I don't think they were. The the two instances I had just could, I mean, really couldn't, weren't people. They're just, I, you know, there's no reason why it would have been a person. And um, I never saw one. I'll tell you really quick. I was muzzleloader deer hunting on the front side of Mount Timpanogos. It was the first Wednesday in October of 2000. I don't remember the day, but I remember this. Um, it was Tuesday or Wednesday. I think it was. I think it was Wednesday, because I had been out of town in Montana and I got back uh, Tuesday night and then headed out. The opening day of the hunt had been, um, I think, on Tuesday. Anyway, um, I was on the front side of Mount Timpanogos. Here in Utah, I had bushwhacked through a bunch of low-growing quaking aspens about this big around and only about 15 feet high. Made a lot of noise just making a straight beeline through them to get to the... so I could start up the face of, of the mountain so I could hunt some of the big bucks that were up in there. And I came through there, made a lot of noise doing it. You know, I just figured, well, I ran any deer out of there, but the bucks that I wanted were higher up anyway. They hang up on that mountains. So I got through there, climbed up just just maybe 15 feet above the top of the canopy on the mountain as it's going up, and sat down on some shale, which are rocks, just a big pile of rocks that's sitting there. And um, sitting there just enjoying the view, and I heard something coming from my left, which was the south, towards the north. It was going to cross in front of me. I And just was like, wow, that's that's big. I could tell it was big. It sounded like a moose or an elk. And I could actually see the top of the trees moving as it was pushing its way through them. So I knew right where it was. I mean, you could hear the crash, crash, but I could see the tops of the trees moving also. Uh, as it got closer, I thought, that's a person. or That's that's two-legged. That's a person. Because if you spend as much time out in the woods hunting and photographing wildlife and stuff, you learn to tell the difference between a four-legged critter and a two-legged critter. And it was obviously two legs, but it was big. I mean, it sounded big. So as it got right in front of me at about about 50 feet away downhill, you know, so the the canopy is 15 feet, you know, down in front of me and it's about 50 feet out. um, I could tell it was two legged and I just thought it was a hunter pushing their way through there. I don't know why they would have, but I mean, I got through there just to get my way up the mountain. So I called out, hey, how's it going? Froze. Didn't make a move. It froze. And I was like, hey, are you another hunter? Come on, you know, call out. Nothing. So I glassed. I'm sitting there with my binoculars glassing. If you know what that entails, you are looking for body parts. You are not looking for a full-on animal. When you're sitting glass in a hillside, don't look for a deer. Don't look for the body. Look for eyes. Look for nose, ears, legs body parts so I'm sitting there looking for body parts ears eyes whatever nothing I sat there for like 15 minutes calling out nothing never didn't move there was not another footstep no response nothing at the time I really didn't think much of it I got up and moved on I'm like well that's weird and just hiked up the mountain was up there till dusk came down uh ended up that a friend of mine and his son were camping right by me and we camped next to each other and ate dinner together and stuff so and i didn't even mention it to him um george is an avid hunter he's a master taxidermist i didn't even mention it to him i didn't really didn't think anything of it um and that was in 2000 at about 91 i think it was the summer of 1991 i was hiking up rock canyon which is just south of there um just up above provo and it was middle of the day, lunch break. I went for a hike, got up in there. I'm I'm outside. I'm, I've gotten high enough. I'm outside of the the narrow canyon area, and it's where it's opened up. And there's just nothing but a bunch of of uh, you know tall scrub oak growing to the left of me on a south facing slope. And the trail is cutting through there. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a rock just hits right in front of me. A rock about that big around. 
just lands right and right in front of me. It went, push. and I was like, what the hell? And I turned and looked the direction it came from just in time to see another one coming right at my head. And I stepped out of the way and started yelling, hey, knock it off, you friggin' moron. Knock it off. I just thought somebody was chucking rocks at me. And then I thought, I just kept walking. I just kept walking, you know, just thought somebody was chucking rocks at me for some stupid ass reason. And then I realized I was the only car parked at the trailhead. This was 91. It's way before they made any of the improvements there at the trailhead, put in the outhouses and the park and all that crap. It's just a dirt road going up in there. You parked as close as you could get to the gate and then started hiking. And there was no other cars in there when I went in there that day. And I didn't think anything of it at the time. And years later, I found out that the uh, it was from talking to people and hearing firsthand accounts from them that they throw rocks at you to get you to move on. <laughs> and I was like, oh. Huh. And also, I ended up talking to a guy uh, years later, mentioned it to uh, that, you know, hunting in the, up in, up on the front side of Mount Timbanogos and saw some, I mean, heard, heard something walking 50 feet in front of me that was two-legged and large. And the dude was like, I saw a Bigfoot in there. And I'm like, full on saw it. He's like, yep. Could not mistake it for what it was. He said it wasn't a bear. It was up upright, walking with its arms swinging. And bears don't walk like that when they walk on their hind legs. And he said it was big, big, like nine, eight, nine feet tall. And just, and I've, I have personally talked to so many people over the years that have ha told me firsthand accounts of seeing these things or seeing tracks or finding a nest. My own brother-in-law was riding the fence line in a ranch in Montana and found a nest. He said his horse started rearing and acting like there was a bear. He got off, got it under control, started looking around and found a big nest about 10 feet in diameter where all the branches have been intertwined together, just twisted together. And there was grass and leaves piled up in it and there was long hairs black hairs and it stunk he said it stunk like a skunk and garbage in there and uh he said he got out he i said what do you think it was and he's like oh i don't know i have my my ideas and i said well <laughs> i said you know mountain gorillas in africa build ground nests similar to that where they will intertwine the branches around them and he's like yeah that's it yeah and uh, he, we since have talked a little bit more about it, and he's convinced that he found a Bigfoot nest. I don't doubt him. So my point is, is whether you believe or you don't believe, it, it, it's not like believing in Santa Claus. There are, there is good evidence. There are foot tra foot tracks, footprints. There's a guy named Jeff Meldrum up in Idaho. He's a professor of anthropology at Idaho State University in Pocatello that is a bipedal locomotion expert and he has collected tracks he wasn't that interested in this until a guy took him out and said look i can show you tracks i can find tracks for you the guy took him out showed him tracks him and his brother jeff and his brother and they were like wow this guy didn't fake these he just took him out and they drove a drove a road and the guy said i i saw some here before and stopped and in there in the dirt road there were tracks jeff has since uh he got a guy named Jimmy Chilcutt, who is a fingerprint expert. Jimmy Chilcutt has, was used by the FBI and that to to testify about fingerprints. He is w uh, one of the world-renowned fingerprint experts because he thought he might be able to determine if fingerprints could determine whether or not uh, the fingerprint was male or female. He actually contacted zoos. First, they thought it was a joke. That he contacted zoos and asked them if he could come fingerprint their primates because primates are the only animals that have fingerprints and thumbprints, dormal ridges are what they're called. Jimmy Chilcutt is an expert on fingerprints. Jeff Meldrum called him up and said, I'd like you to come look at my some of my castings I have of Bigfoot tracks and I think they have dermal ridges on them and I'd like you to, to tell me if they are. Jimmy thought it was a joke. <laughs> he thought somebody was pranking him. He ended up going up there to Idaho State University, getting to know Jeff, looking at some of these castings, and walked away being a firm believer that an unknown hominid has made these tracks because he said some of these, there's no way they're faked. The cast was, it was made in soft mud. You could see the dermal ridges, the plaster cast, 
um, or whatever they were used to, to cast it, captured all that detail, and he's like, this is not fake. Jimmy walked away believing. So whether you believe or not, hey, but I believe in Santa Claus too, so hey. <laughs> so stay tuned for another episode like this where I'm going to show that those guys are skiers by getting my own footage. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, happy trails. <laughs>